Chapter 18. You know that there are two chapters to go for this book? Gabi, no, how time flies. <sighs> and then we're moving to another book. So next time, pag-usapan natin kung ano yun. Pero, ano, <laughs> uh, basta maganda yung ating next book. Anyway, so tonight is all about um, uh, stress-free parenting. So kahit na... Hindi sabi nga ni Ella kanina, uh, even, even though you're not a parent, somehow you have um, parented somebody like being a teacher or yung apo mo or your um, spiritual children in the Lord. Actually, mas difficult pa nga minsan yun eh. Anyway, so, but we, before we begin with, ano, we begin with uh, uh, zooming into the parenting part. Is let me let me just uh, no, let me just um, start off with Amos eight eleven, a famine in the land, not a famine of bread. In the last days, in our time, there's gonna be a famine in the land, not a fa but it's not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. So simply, it's it's available, right? So never has been, uh, ne never there was a time that everything is already available. The internet has equalized everybody. Can you imagine? Yung yung ano yung hearing hearing the words of the Lord is Yahweh, and Yahweh is the the name the the covenant name of God. So this is the Lord Jesus, right? Yud Hey Bave. This is what is written in the yung acrostics dun sa dun sa cross, di ba? Anyway, you know that now, unlike before, um, during our time in, when we were studying, right? If you don't have um, the book, yung, yung whole set of Encyclopedia Britannica, medyo, di ba? Puta ka pa sa library, mamamasahe ka pa. Tapos, you, you really have to research. But yung mga, yung mga, our classmates who are well-to-do, they have all the resources, all the encyclopedias of the world. But now, right, because of the advent of internet, Right? It's open and in terms of learning, kumaga, everybody's on the same, on the same, um, on the same foot, kumaga, on the same platform. So it's just a matter of, um, um, you really want to learn, you, you, you want to set, uh, you, you set aside time. So it's the same with, uh, it's the same with the hearing of the word of the Lord, right? It's, it, it, there's a there's plenty of resources. Punta ka lang sa josephprince.com, right? There, there's a lot and other also other other great speakers like Paul Ellis, yung uh, um, Escape to Reality. Then a lot of great speakers who are there is an army actually nowadays, and it's all available in the net. So so makita mo that there's no famine of food, but there's famine of hearing of the word. Simply people doesn't want to hear. So, so, and it's actually what, what the, uh, among the, among the Israelites, right? You know, that that's the, um, how do you love the Lord and how do you, union first commandment is Shama. Hear, hear ye, O Israel. This is the morning and evening, the, the, the prayer that they do, morning, lunch, and evening. Hear, O, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. Hindi ko ma-recite in Hebrew. Siguro one time i ano ko i i ano ko i memorize ko. Pero yun yung ano yun yung even from from time immemorial the Lord is emphasizing here and here and here. Hallelujah. It's the way out of famine. So, because it's it's the God's heart is revealed to you as you hear his word. As you, hear, as you hear the words of Christ. So I want to encourage you to, to, to go back to the October 17 preaching of Pastor Prince, which is entitled God's Heart for Your Family. In there, Pastor Prince heralded, heralded actually, it's like a, a clarion call. God wants you to enjoy family blessings. It is in his heart for us to really enjoy our family. It is a testimony, actually. It is a testimony to the glory of God. Because how do pe how will people? Because yung glory, di ba? It's not like yung luminous, transcendent, um, um, uh, shiny, shimmering. No, glory doxa is having a good opinion. How will other people have a good opinion of God when they see the testimony of the Lord in your life and in 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 your life, in my life, in our family life? 
right? It's it's it it is a testimony to the glory of the Lord when our families leave with this peace and light. They will be curious, they will be envious, they will be jealous, and they will they they will ask you, who is this God? Right? So it's it's um uh, it's something that um uh, you know it's uh kumbaga, uh something in the heart of Abba that he wants us to catch that God doesn't want our children to fail. He doesn't want our marriages to fail, but he wants us to really enjoy our family life. So, mag-review lang tayo konti. I don't know if I've included this in the Wednesday deck. I don't think so. So that's why ulitin ko. Marriage is God's idea before we go to the um, children part. In Psalms 1, 2, 8, 3a, it says, Your wife, Isha. You know that um, in the Hebrew and in the, in the Greek text, actually, it's not wife. In the Hebrew, it's Isha will be like a fruitful vine, grapevine, flourishing within your home. So Isha, woman. That's why, see, see Adam, right? When he saw Eve, he said, you will be called woman, flesh of my bones, uh, the flesh of my flesh, flesh, the bone of my bones. You know that literally he's, he said, in other words, I, he saw himself. He saw himself in the woman. So in the original Hebrew language, there's no Hebrew word for husband. The husband is, is uh, called man-ish. Likewise, there's no Hebrew word for wife. The wife is still called, is called isha. In the Greek also, the word for husband is aner, which is also the same word for man or male. The Greek word for wife is the word gyne. That's why yung obe gyne, which is also the same word for woman. That is why the first thing that natutunan namin actually when we were starting our grace journey is not to call each other papa and mommy, daddy and uh, daddy and mommy. Your husband is not your father or your papa. Your wife is not your mommy. You have to call her your woman or your for your husband your man. Or other words like sweetheart, honey bunch, right? Honey bunny, whatever. But hindi papa, because your father is Abba Daddy God. Hallelujah. So, pwede in the context of, in the context of a small children of a small child, pwede yon. But when you ha, you are intimate, don't call him papa. Don't call him mommy, right? He's he, he, he you, you're not the you're not one another's parent. Okay. So in both Hebrew and Greek, she's my wife will be translated she's my woman. So. Uh, 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 vice versa. He is my man. Ganyan. So, why is that God ordained it such that through the original languages, remember Hebrew is a very relationship language. It is a language of family. It's familiar. That's why meron siyang root word. Meron pa siyang semitic, semitic origin. Meron pa siyang mga Akkadian origin. Because it's very much related. That's why you will see the heart of Abba. His heart longs for a relationship. That's why it's God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they said, let's make man in our image. Hallelujah. So why is that God ordained it such through that the original languages, husband and wife, are to see each other as a man and a woman? Because God knows the psychological makeup of men. It is easy for a husband to see an attractive woman on television and think, now that's a woman, that's a babe. Right, but when he looks at his wife, he looks he looks at her with familiarity and just sees her wife. Look at the TV, babe, woman. That's why maganda rin pa nang magtawagan yung babe, right? The same goes for a wife in her marriage. So the word husband and wife have become words associated with duty rather than excitement. They can cultivate familiarity that causes you to stop seeing your spouse as someone physically attractive. It is important to see your wife as your woman during your bride honeymoon night and see your husband as your bridegroom man during your honeymoon. So ito ha, ish for man, isha for woman. Marami tayong matutunan, matutunan dito. And Adam said, this is now the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. She, in other words, he saw himself in the woman, I, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man in Genesis 2. So, ish and isha, woman as an extra hey, ito yung hey, diba? The, uh, the fifth letter in the Hebrew alphabet. God 
place an extra grace in women mm, to be more perspective uh, to be more perceptive why did god create woman to point man to what is good god created eve to point adam to the tree of life and the tree of life represents or is actually our lord jesus christ when you put yod ito yung yod di ba yod yod hey it's a uh, it's a picture of a hand right and then hey from the woman together you get the the name of god which is ya hallelujah so pag sinabi mo are you are you okay yeah <laughs> yeah so husband sabi ng in the first peter 3:7 Likewise, dwell with them with understanding. Who yung them? The wife, right? The the woman. Giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel and being heirs together of the grace of life. Together. That your prayers may not be hindered. Ah, pwede pa lang may hinder when you're not honoring your wife. Hmm. The word says that when you don't honor your wife, your prayers will be hindered. There is power released when there is honor between a husband and a wife, and both of them are in agreement. So, ito yung yod tsaka yung he, di ba? But if you take God, pag, uh, when you take God, yeah, out of the union, anong nangyayari? It, it becomes esh. It becomes fire. It becomes mainit, away, di ba? Marriage relationship will burn. Destructive forces can come if the Lord is not in it. That's why the Lord is admonishing us, do not be equally yoked with unbeliever when it comes to marriage because it will be it will be fire. Mainit, masalim yung ot. So, God gives you the power to get wealth, you know? And it's all in the context of marriage. God's power is released when a man and a woman become one in marriage covenant. Again, katan, di ba yung groom? And then kala, the bride, you take the first two letters, yung uh, kaf and then yung tab, it forms the word power, koak. Yeah. So when the husband and the wife are together as one, there is power. In order to rob you of this power, the devil will try to sow strife and cause disagreement between the husband and the wife. There is power in being in agreement, especially when it comes to parenting and finances. Yeah. So, in Psalms 21 to 8, again, your wife, Isha, will be like a fruitful grapevine flourishing within your home. So, your wife, like a fruitful vine, vines produce wine. Wine represents being intoxicated with your wife's love. So, look at your wife and be intoxicated with her love. Yeah, i-share mo to, pero well, sa wife mo. So Deuteronomy 11, so punta na tayo dun sa main text, main uh, main um, verse, main main scripture for chapter 18. Deuteronomy 11, 18 to 21 in KGB. Therefore shall ye lay up this my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be frontlets between your eyes. So may two parts, no? The first part speaks of you as a parent. What the Lord is saying is you lay up my words in your heart, in your heart, in your in, in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlets before your eyes. Physically, uh, uh, they, the, the, the Jews actually, the especially the Orthodox one, um, took it to really literal, literal. So meron silang mga phylacteries ang tawag doon eh. But for for us new covenant people, um it will this it's it's going to be putting putting the 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 word of the Lord in front of us so that we may see, right? When we hear, we see. So yung second part. Now when when you are laying when you are laying words, the words of Yahweh in your heart, then you can overflow and you teach your children Speak of them when you uh, when thou sittest in thine house, and when you when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt try them upon the doorpost of thine house and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear to your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. So Deuteronomy eleven eighteen to twenty one. Therefore, you shall lay up these words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be frontlets in your eyes. What does it mean that therefore you shall lay up? Again, you see Aleph Tav. So it's all about, uh, it's all about 
hearing Jesus, seeing Jesus in the Word. Hallelujah. Seeing pass through all the challenges and all the whatever it is and just seeing Him, seeing that we are in Him. Hallelujah. And, okay, you know that this, uh, I came across this, uh, this actually this book today. Seth Grodin is the, uh, I'm sure see Arlene very familiar, is the author of Purple Cow. Uh, he's a very uh, prolific um, marketing guru. I think uh, mas favorite ko siya kaysa, ka, kaysa dun sa, uh, I, I forgot who's the original guru, forget ko na. And may si, nakalimutan ko na siya. Anyway, si Seth, Gro, si Seth Godin, ang sabi, mayroon siyang bagong book. Bago ba? Or ngayon ko lang nakita. This is marketing. You know what he said? You can't be seen until you learn to see. Hmm. Very insightful, no? You can't be seen. Meaning, you, your brand, your product, what you say, what you're saying now, can't be seen until you learn, you learn to see. It's the same with parenting, right? You cannot be seen by your children. Unless you've seen the Lord, unless you learn to see the Lord, you cannot overflow. Even in your children, actually, it's marketing. That my my realization today. So, what 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 the Apostle Paul is saying to us, Second Corinthians four eighteen. So fix your eye, fix our eyes on what is seen. What so fix our eyes not on what. So fix our eyes not on what is seen, it's the invisible, right? But on what is unseen. So fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So you can't depend, sabi ni Mark Twain, you can't depend on your eyes when your imagination is out of focus. So when our focus is not Jesus, when our focus is not grace, or when we're, u- when we're using the wrong lens when we're reading the Bible, it's going to be problematic. So our because our Lord Jesus wants us to see how He sees us in our in our situation. So it's like you can you, you cannot be seen by your children unless you learn to see. So it begins, and it begins as a parent, it begins with knowing what God thinks of you. As he increasingly wins you over to his way of thinking about you through hearing and hearing and hearing. You'll increasingly live as you really are because you'll know who you really are. You're going to be so sure and you're not going to be stuttering or you're not. It's okay to stutter once in a while, but you're, you're going to be so sure when you, when you preach the gospel to your children. Like when you say, God really loves you, you know, math, math you know, math is from the Lord. You can ask the Lord, you know, well, I can relate with uh, with, with your child. You know somebody, I was already working uh, in a be- very big um, pharma company and my boss told me, Joe, the feedback is you're not good in math. Huh? <laughs> you know what I did? I really asked from the Lord, Lord, let, let, let me understand algebra because I know, I, I know that algebra, when I finally I understand algebra, is I can apply it to, to marketing and I, 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 I can apply it to um, all those computation, all those business plan, etc. And you know what? Before I hated it, right? And and then when I asked the Lord to really teach me how huh, and to really make me understand the principle, it's now I love it. Actually, <laughs> I love it. So, you know, I I didn't believe that I didn't believe my boss that you're a failure in math, whatever. You know, I I believe what my Abba said. Ask. Ask from me wisdom and I will give it to you. Hallelujah. We have, we have a very good father. He can give it to us, whatever we need. So when your opinion of yourself matches up with God's opinion of you, it has to match. And when you are in line with how, and, 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 and when you are, when you are, it lines up with how you live to the glory of God. It will be stunningly evident. Again, when your opinion of yourself matches up with God's opinion opinion of you, and when and when who you are lines up with how you live, the glory of God will be so stunningly evident. Just like, just like my algebra and all my business plans. <laughs> Hallelujah! You know, I sometimes I, I I pinch myself. No, 
I've created so many trackers, so many algorithms, so many, so many whatever Excel sheets with with all the with with all the which is usable, which is uh, user friendly for 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 my market marketeers, which I provided them. If you ask me, like fifteen years ago, I I really I really didn't understand. But it's knowing who I was before the Lord that I am His child that I can ask from Him. I can ask from him. Hallelujah. So, because in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone, anyone, kahit sino, he's a new creation. The old is gone. The old who was afraid of math, who doesn't know anything about math, the new has come. And it came with a problem-solving, new understanding. Hallelujah. So, what the Lord is saying, what Abba is saying, be who you are, not who you were. Again, be who you are, not who you were. New creation, new creation in Christ. And it will manifest before your children. Hallelujah. Now you know what? I was so happy that I can teach actually my children math. And I can teach them how to apply it. Because my, my, um, my firstborn is... Uh, I'm so happy and I'm so very proud of him. Um, he was hired by D.B. Schenker as um, HR management trainee. And in, in, and you know what? <laughs> he was asking me about um, how to go about this HR tracker, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I, 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 I told him, oh, this you will do. You have to know the context. You have to know the background. You have to know strategy before you create a tracker because you, can, you cannot just create a tracker. So you have to connect all the dots. Wow, in, a, in an Excel. Ah. So, you know, if he asked me before, how? But it's because of the Lord. I am a new creation. The new has come. I'm not who I was before. So be who you are, not who you were. Through Christ, you and I have been given God's life with a new way to live. Since Jesus said the way, the truth, and the life, he made his entrance into us. We're not flesh anymore. Jesus has successfully made the spirit new creations now new creations now filled with God filled with life so life is so exciting you can learn actually continuously it's a lifelong it's a lifelong learning hallelujah that's why now who would ever think that we'll be learning Hebrew and Greek at this point of our lives <laughs> hallelujah so in 1 Corinthians 2 14 in the new living translation but people who aren't spiritual can receive, cannot receive these truths from God's spirit because they're not new creation. They are from the old. It all sounds foolish to them and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means. Sometimes also people who, who, be, who were born again um, a long time ago but were not hearing and hearing, so they, you know, they cannot understand. But once they hear, and here and here it will be activated so what is the natural man the natural man is the man or woman limited to believing only what their natural senses tell them what he has not seen or heard or felt he does not believe in he only believes in his natural experience so if he's not experiencing the provision of god through his natural senses then he believes he has not been provided for Time and again, the Lord has been admonishing us, right? See past your challenges. See past this problem and see God. Hallelujah. We can only imagine what Jesus looked like and felt like in the natural after 40 days in the desert. Can you imagine 40 days not eating and not drinking? He must be, you know, so thin. To the natural man, he would not have looked anything like someone who had access to all the provision of heaven. Just like when he was in the scourging post, right? He was swept all blooded. Who would who would think, right? Where's where, where is the where where is God? Where's the uh son of son of God who's who's healing left and right? And then he's being scourged. And then when he when he faced Pilate, right, being all blooded, and the people chose Barabbas. Yet Yet, it was in those moments, like those when he, in those moments, like those, like this ones, when he revealed his identity most clearly. Hallelujah. For in it, for it is in the darkness that the light is best seen. 
uh, that's why when we uh when we hurdle a problem when we when we just like david when we see past the problem right and we finally um come to a conclusion and victory and the victory is there it's so sweet god is not asking us so now child of god god is not asking us believers to make our lives look in the natural like we have access to all the provision of heaven it's not our job he simply states that we have with all the challenges and with all the problems whatever he simply states that you have that you are a child of god that you have access to all his provision and he just simply asks us to believe that in all seasons and in all states his word plainly says that if you're a believer you're not just natural you're supernatural actually being your a spiritual being in first peter 1 23 for you have been born again that's why we have to be born again you know for the simple reason that we because we have to be born again for us to 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 call abba daddy god our father hallelujah not of perishable seed but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of god hallelujah our natural circumstances are not god's view and opinion of us christ death resurrection <coughs> and ascension are god's eternal declaration of our identity and worth to him that's it's it's so beautiful i want to repeat it our natural circumstances are not god's view and opinion of us god's death his resurrection and ascension are God's eternal declaration of our identity and worth to Him because we are in Christ. No matter what this world does to you, only, only you through unbelief can rob yourself of living as a blessed child of God in all season. And this is what, actually what God wants us to really understand so we can overflow to our children no matter what because children actually observe when when there's a problem and there's a challenge um even though we're not talking even though we're not you know um, um revealing our thoughts and our 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 emotions they can see actually if we are say if we are being true to what we are saying if we are being true to us declaring that we are believers in christ hallelujah so receive your identity it's the first part of deuteronomy 11 receive your identity from what he has done for you not from what you have done for him receive your identity from what he has done for you not from what you have done for him name yourself after whom he declares you to be not whom this world declares you to be it doesn't matter what the world calls you don't draw your worth or your value your identity from the natural realm Things you do, stuff you own, your reputation or your reputation among people. But live rather from this one truth that you are born from above so you can live from above as a child of God. First is we have to understand that we are children, not slaves. Hallelujah. So that we can actually look at our children as our children, not slaves. There's there's one story in Singapore. You know, in Singapore, but they live in... Uh, um, hdb houses or in condo so uh more or less in 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 the vicinity actually of the condo below there's uh like a very small convenience store or sometimes um fair price so you uh, the parents actually um uh for, there's this one family they keep on asking the boy to make errands or buy buy things uh buy sugar ganyan um in fair price or in the convenience store so why what <laughs> Finally, one day, the cuento to the pastor pins. Finally, one day, the 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 boy actually who is like um I think six seven years old. He said, "Now I know why you had me. You want a maid, no?" <laughs> so the perception of the, the perception of the boy, right? Uh, uh, about his parents, like he was he they, they 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 he was brought out of this world for him to be an errand boy, which is very sad, right? So. How do how we relate to our children is how we see how how we see God relating to us. Child of God, you are not you're not a slave. You are a child. You are you are me, you are a, you are for his inheritance. So 
how, how do we renew our minds? How do we get this metanoia every day? Keep hearing the gospel and you will begin to see as far as God can see. So good. Keep hearing the gospel and you will begin to see as far as God can see. And begin to see as he sees is to begin to live as he sees you to be. Hallelujah. Because our Father knows what we need, you know. He, he knows. He knows that we need all this. We, he, he knows that um, oh, we need this, um, uh, uh, this, this career. We, we need provision. We need whatever. He knows. He never wants us to look to what we have or what we do in this world as our source of identity. We're not to look to perishable things. Our identity, for our identity, is found in the imperishable. Our identity is from our, it's, 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 it, our identity actually is from Him. It's not from, from our natural heritage. But our true identity is Christ as children of the King of Kings. Hallelujah. So beautiful. So Paul, in Galatians in 2.20, Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live in Christ, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So in Psalms 91.2, this will really bless you. I will say of the Lord, and actually I, I almost fell from my chair when I saw this. I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. You know the phrase, in Him will I trust, is batak. You know what it means? It's welded to God. Child of God. Bride of Christ. You are welded to God. Batak means to adhere to. It is the word for glue in the modern Hebrew. It originally came from the ancient art of welding. Welding has been traced back to the Bronze Age beginning around 2003 and then in the Mesopotamian uh, era, uh, era as early as 15 BC and 1000 BC. Welding was a known process at that time uh, at that time of the common use of the word bata. And the cry of his heart for us is to have a profound revelation that we are welded with him, that we are one with him. What happens when you when you weld two pieces of metal together is that you met that you meld the two pieces of metal into each other. The metal from one piece mixes with the metal of the other piece, and the metal from the other piece mixes with the metal of the first piece, so that each piece of the metal is joined together with, with each other's metal. And you know what? When there's impurities in the metal, you cannot join you cannot join it to the other metal. Because Jesus made us so clean and blameless, we can join him. It's because of the finished work. Hallelujah. This process is what the ancients used to describe the idea of trust. So when you say, in him, I will trust. You are declaring, I am welded to you. When we trust in God, we blend into him and he into us. So when you, when, when you declare to your children, right? My child, when you say, we trust the Lord, we are declaring, Lord, we are welded to you. The only way to guarantee that an area of our life does not break or does not fall off is to well, fall off is to weld it, blend it into God or trust God. So you can share this with your children. You know that when you say you trust God, you're telling him you are welded to him. I will batak weld every area of my life life to him, into him, especially math. Just like this, right? The cross. You're welded to him. So when we cannot see that Christ made us his home, his habitation, we'll always be waiting for a visitation from God and we'll be unsure. To you, church, the bride of Christ, you are a people awakened by the Holy Spirit to the truth that we are hidden with Christ, no longer mere man, but the very temple of the Holy Spirit. You know that there's a pilgrimage church in Rome? There's a plaque in one of the churches when you, when you go to Rome and then you make the rounds. There's one church, it says, if you came here looking for Christ, if you didn't bring him with you, you won't find him here. Very, very true, right? So, you know, in Matthew 8, 20, Jesus, Jesus, our Lord Jesus said, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of God has nowhere to lay his head. What Jesus said in Matthew 8, 20 is so beautiful. In the original Greek text, the word lay is a very unique word, klino. 
It is seldom used in the New Testament. The only other place it is used in terms of Jesus resting his head is at the cross. When Jesus hung on the cross and cried, it is finished. The Bible said he bowed his head and gave up his ghost. Yung bowed on his klino. The, the word bowed here is the same Greek word klino. Beloved, it was only at the cross that the Son of Man finally, finally found a place to rest his head. He finally found his home in you. Jesus found his resting place, his resting in redeeming you, in saving you. He found his rest in loving you. And likewise, let's find, let's find a rest in him. He found a dwelling place in you. Hallelujah. And this actually is the very revelation that the Lord wants us to really be rooted on so that we can overflow to our children. Because God has unparalleled blessing earmarked for you. In um, one of the scriptures that in, in the chapter, Blessed be the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from, dead, uh, from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefined and that and does not fade away. We serve in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last last time. So there, there are three characteristics of our inheritance in Christ. It is incorruptible. It's not subject to death or natural laws of this earth. It is undefined. It cannot be stained or defined by sin. This means that the sin cannot dis disqualify you from receiving them. It's unfading. It's not subject to time. It's diminishable. God is out of time because he's the one who created time, right? So meaning our inheritance also, it's, it's, it's beyond time. Hallelujah. And one of them, actually, one of the inheritance is in Psalms 1, 2, 7, 3, 5. Behold, children are heritage nakala from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has, a, who has his quiver full of them. You know, yung, 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 yung word on the heritage is the same word used by Joshua in Joshua 13.33 as my portion, nakali. The word inheritance in the Hebrew, nakala or nakali, is from the root word nakal, which means inheritance. But it's semitic root. It is the word for a stream that is flowing downward. So it's from Abba. Hallelujah. This is this is what an inheritance is. The wealth of the father flowing down to the next generation. And you know, it's most precious in Psalms 103, 17. And this is the uh, verse that I gave you yesterday. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting, from olam to alam, upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto his children's children. Hallelujah. You know, so now being rooted, right? We see our children the way God sees them. In Psalm 1283b, your children will be like vigorous young olive trees as they sit around your table. So na, na discuss natin to right last week. But why olive plants? Because an olive tree can keep perpetuating itself even when its trunk rots partially or dies. It's able to rejuvenate itself at its base putting out new shoots from its roots. So you so see your children like olive plants, flourishing, hardy, resilient, able to survive against all odds, whatever subject it is. And from the olive plants, you get olive oil. Your children are anointed. See your children anointed and filled with the Holy Spirit. See them set apart and see the, that the work of their hand is anointed, that whatever they touch prospers. And because they are filled with the Holy Spirit, see your children flowing in His wisdom. Hallelujah. And the Lord is saying, you shall teach them, Aleph Tav, to your children. It is actually telling, telling us to teach Jesus to our children. In Deuteronomy 11, 19, you shall teach them to your children, speaking of them, when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. So this is the one, and you shall teach them, Aleph Tav, which is, you can see from Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created, and there, Aleph Tav, you will not see it in the English text. You, you will see it when you look at the um, Hebrew text in the interlinear. So what is, the, what, what is the Lord saying to us? Children, not slaves. You first, us first, right? Children, not slaves. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 
You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You have received a spirit of adoption whereby you cry, Abba, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You know, there's another book, actually. It's not actually a uh, uh, grace book or really a religious book by Seth Godin. It's Stealing Dreams. But you know what? It's a book about um, the how the educational system of our age actually is destroying our children's dreams. Our job as parents is not to whack our, our uh, to whack the sin, point out sin to our kids, right? But to prophetically call for the treasure of God that He has placed within them as parents. Dreams because dreams are very difficult to build and easy to destroy. You know, I have a free copy of this. I can give this to you. Uh, he's talking about, you know, that as as uh, as parents and as teachers, we're supposed to, you know, cultivate, you know, that, that our, our children continue to dream. You know, I stumbled upon this actually last night. You know who this guy is? This is Shimon Perez, one of the uh, uh, greatest statesmen who have ever lived. He's the one, one he's the... Um, uh, prime minister and uh, he became president of Israel. This is his this is his um, legacy. Statesman, um, nine president of the state of Israel. He became prime minister. He's a Nobel Peace Prize laureate. He was the one who brokered the peace treaty with um, with uh, the Palestinians. He was he was the one who was talking to Yasser Arafat, Arafat and we were, we were very young. Shapalayon. So Shimon Peres was the founding father of Israel. From the early years of establishment, he was this, he was central in its he built the defense system of Israel. From spearheading deterrence and defense capabilities, he developed the IDF, um, the uh, Israel Defense the Israel Defense Force, to establishing the 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 first nuclear uh, reactor research center of Israel. He worked tirelessly for decades to promote peaceful relations with Israel and between Israel and its neighbors. And he led Israel to become the one of the, you know, become a global technology and innovation powerhouse. And you know, his life mantra, his life, I don't want mantra, his life, um, um, uh, his, his, his vision, his, what we believe, he, what he believes in is never stop dreaming. It's in Netflix. Panoorin nyo, you will be, you, you, you know, I recommended it to my children. You know, he said, one of his quotes, you're, you're as young as your dreams, not as old as your calendar. If you have more dreams than achievements, you're young. Hallelujah. And he said, and he said this one, which mm, I think it's it's a very good to share. When a friend makes mistakes, because as a politician, he made so many friends who turned enemies. But he said, when a friend makes mistake, the friend remains a friend. And the mistake remains a mistake. It's just like the Lord, right? Even in our mistake, right? He sees us as his child. He sees us as his bride. Hallelujah. And he said, I have a brother younger than me. My mother was a librarian. So from her, I got the taste to read. So as a mother, especially, right? As a mother, I, I, will, share this with, I will share this with you. In Exodus 35, 25, 26, all the women who were gifted artisans spun yarn with their hands and brought what they spun of blue, purple, and scarlet, and fine linen. This, this, these are the, these are the, 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 the women who actually uh, made the or spun the yarn of the yung curtains in the tabernacle. It's made up of blue, purple, scarlet threads. All these colors actually represents the beautiful picture of the Lord. First and foremost, as fathers and mothers, our 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 ministry is to our children. What and what is it? To tell stories about the Lord, to tell to tell the beautiful the, the beauty of our Lord Jesus Christ, the red, the blue, and the purple. One of the most important things you can do is speak words of life to your child, and this is true whether you are a parent, a grandparent, a caregiver, a teacher, a babysitter, a coach, a family, a friend, a healthcare worker, a pastor. Children hear a lot of rubbish, so it's important that we fill their hearts and minds with good, edifying words from Jesus most specially, so that they can see what you see. There's life and death in the power of the tongue. You know, si Shimon bears again, whoever of you love life, and actually this he quoted from uh, from the Old Testament, 
and it's in the New Testament as well. And desire to see many good days. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Seek peace and pursue it. And, and he said actually, and he said in one of his quotes, and I was not able to paste it, that never, never he heard not a single curse or a bad word from his parents. Never. Only encouraging words. So I, I can share, I, I want to share you with this. You know, see si Paul Ellis, the, the author of the Gospel of 10 Words and Gospel in 20 Questions, which we, which we had a book study on. He, he has this in 50 phrases, 50 phrases to say to your children, which I find very, very good and very practical. To establish your identity. For example, I will always love you no matter what. I love being dad, being your mom and being your dad. I'm so happy God gave you to us to establish your identity. You are a child of the king. God made you beautiful inside out. So it's it's very good, no? Like, for example, young children, you can write notes. Especially now that they're going um, face to face, you can write um, sticky notes. Write to them, let's say, I will always love you no matter what. Have a nice day. Oh, di ba? So, ano pa? To establish their self-worth, you're God's awesome masterpiece. I believe in you. Always be yourself no, no matter what it takes. I trust you. You have great ideas. I'm so proud of you. And then to help them find their voice, I'm listening. What was the best and worst part of your day? I can't wait to hear all about it. Your words matter. Oh, that's a good point. That's a great question. I love you. I love how you said it. Good idea. And then to mend a hurt. You were right. It's very hard to say, right? I was wrong. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you for telling me that was really brave. I forgive you. We will make all mistakes. So all of this actually are in uh, is in this one um, um, uh, uh, printable version of the 50 phrases to, to say to your children. So finally, God sets the solitary in families, you know, because God is all about relationship. God is all about families. He He's the one actually who authored the family when he created Adam and Eve, right? And then uh, again, the story about the bridegroom and the bride. Family is where we do life and where we encounter Jesus. It's where we we we, we experience unconditional unconditional love. In a, in a healthy family, you are loved no matter what. Just like our Lord Jesus Christ, right? He loves us no matter what. It's a love-based relationship. Our marriage, our children are a product of love. We, did, we didn't marry our husbands or we didn't marry our wives to just have kids, right? Be because we love our husbands, we love our wives. That's why we married them. And also our, our, our children, we love them. We, we, we love them, right? Unconditionally. It's a love-based relationship. And then it's a place where we can be our real selves, right? If 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 you did something, if you you know, for example, they're very common nowadays, right? You, for example, uh, I I see my children. Uh, yung yung aking you know, he is not into really you know um, fashion, and I I catch him. Ezra, why why is your belt like that? You know, he's very secured. <laughs> he, he doesn't. He doesn't really mind because he knows, right, that, uh, you know, uh, he's, he's, he's loved no matter what and he can take the correction. Ano pa? The parents actually, in the, in the setting of families, the, the, the parents provide and the children receive. It's like our Abba Daddy God, right? He provides and we receive. Hallelujah. And children, in the, in the context of families, children are empowered. We, we the, the children are are uh, encouraged to dream encouraged to dream we are, we don't treat them treat them like robots right we there's a room for them to really sound of their ideas hallelujah and we ask them one time no um a challenge for you ask them what they think about this particular verse ask them like um you know what what is your opinion or what what is what, what can you say about you know uh uh why did Jesus, you know, went to the cross to went to the cross for you? Just ask them, you know, to empower them. And then in the in the family, in the family setting, also children are encouraged to think for themselves. So it is where 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 we encourage them to really seek things, to really to really not take our words for it, but to 
but to look for the evidence. Hallelujah. And then, and then another, and the, lastly, children are encouraged to dream. To dream because, you know, as, as God believes in you as the parent, we also overflow, overflow to them and, and, and tell them we believe in you because you are also God's child, right? The, the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead, the same spirit who, who, who is in you is also in them. So they're free to dream, encourage them to dream. Because more than us, more than us believe, believe, believing in them, it is God believing in them. God believes in you. And that is actually more than enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that, my dear sisters, is chapter 18. <music>